Lincoln and Washington are based on actual people, locations, and events. The city does have references to ancient civilizations. The Scottish Rite Temple does exist. It does feature two 17-ton sphinxes out front and an unfinished pyramid on top. The interior really has a huge temple with a skylight mimicking the all-seeing eye on the dollar bill and two bodies buried inside. The novel's depiction of the secret symbols found in the city's layout has fascinated symbologists and conspiracy theorists around the world. The cornerstone of the Washington Monument does contain a Bible and the Latin words, Laus Deo, meaning praise God, are written on its capstone. The book's assertion that our founding fathers believed in astrology is true. The White House, Capitol, and Washington Monument are aligned according to the stars. And their cornerstones were all laid out under the same astrological sign, Virgo. That the sign of Virgo also played a role in our U.S. Constitution. This is further evidence that our founding fathers used astrology for major decisions. Virgo has a great deal of influence in regards to the United States of America. Our Constitution, September 17th, right? Uh, when, you, when you take a look at very important dates, you will find that, the, that Virgo was part of it. You line up the stars above with what's on the earth, you're going to have a spiritual harmony, and you're going to be able to accomplish great things. Under the guidance of Master Masons George Washington and Benjamin Franklin, French surveyor Pierre Enfant designed the capital city, just as the book states. In the book, Brown depicts our founding fathers creating Washington as a realization of the Enlightenment, a new Atlantis, where reason, science, and freedom would triumph over ignorance and darkness. This is a fact. Though not mentioned in the book, George Washington in particular believed this capital must be as grand as any in the world. Washington felt strongly that it needed to be a monumental city. It needed to be a city that people would respect, like the European capitals. And even though the United States was a young country and struggling, that he was looking down the road to the future. Washington designed the city to reflect the glory of Athens and Rome here in this new world. But the legend of the Masonic Pyramid and its role in protecting ancient mysteries. Brown says in the lost symbol that the Masons are the last custodians of the ancient mysteries. And that's partially true. The traditions of Freemasonry come from lots and lots of different sources. These sources include the influential writings of great thinkers such as Isaac Newton and Francis Bacon, as well as the holy books, including the Bible, the Quran, and Bhagavad Gita. This is something where Dan Brown is historically quite accurate. There were a number of mystery religions in Greece, in Rome, in Egypt. Now, what is it the mystery religions taught? Not to be a joker here, but it's a mystery. In the lost symbol, Brown writes of the Bible's immense power to transform for the better, but also warns against the literal interpretation of its cryptic prose. Our founding fathers insisted on the separation of church and state. It is also why the Masons go to such lengths to remove any religious dogma from the rituals and beliefs. The novel relates that Thomas Jefferson went so far as to edit the Bible to eliminate any interpretation. That is an accurate portrayal. It took him 16 years. What he did was he took a Bible and he cut out line after line of anything that Jesus said. And he said, that's what I want to focus on, what Jesus said, not all these interpreters. Where the lost symbol is wrong, however, is that Jefferson's Bible was given to every incoming member of Congress during the first half of the 19th century. That happened in the 20th century. An important theme in the lost symbol is the idea of transformation. Brown's evil villain used tattoos as a declaration of power. In the Chamber of Reflection, an hourglass symbolized the transformative effects of time. And a noetic scientist discussed the mind's ability to transform cancer cells into healthy ones. Well, in Dan Brown's The Lost Symbol, they talk about transformation in two ways. One is a, a kind of fanaticism that is very um, exclusive. They 
ultimately leads to a negative consequence. You can think about Nazi Germany as being a transformational movement. On the other hand, we can look at the spiritual and wisdom traditions of the world and see that these kinds of transformations can lead to a flowering of our human potential. As the lost symbol eliminates, our founding fathers understood that link to the past. Together, they brought forth the nation, a new world that built on these beliefs. There's one thing that binds all Freemasons together. They are searching for life. They are searching for wisdom, for truth. They are attempting to make themselves better people in that search for life. As we have seen, the novel uses some real facts in creating a great work of fiction. But sometimes, the real world is just as fascinating as an imaginary one. We're here on the banks of the Potomac River in Alexandria, Virginia, where the cornerstone of the city of Washington was laid in April 1791 by Masons, George Washington, and others, who came here to, to designate this as the bottom of what was then uh, a quadrangle that was tipped on its side like this, and this is the, the southernmost point. The novel depicts the city's planet, Pierre Enfant, as having laid out the streets in a pattern to suggest Masonic symbols. Montfort's plan can be seen as a map in Freedom Plaza, a pivotal location in the fictional story. Here in the book, the character Catherine Solomon claims the U.S. dollar bill contains a hidden star of Solomon, a key Masonic symbol. That's true. Just draw a line connecting the letters M-A-S-O-N and combine that with the pyramid. Ever since Longfall laid out the city, people have been searching for symbols of meaning. New interpretations are ongoing and controversial. This is all mentioned in Dan Brown's book. When looking down at the layout, signs seem to appear, such as a pentagram, some of the alleged symbols, including the six-pointed seal of Solomon, unidentified, and the cross of the Knights Templar. But many people, including some of the young students in the lost symbol, see a darker agenda. There's a great theory that the layout of the streets the capital, etc., when looked at from above, let's say, form certain satanic symbols, like an inverted pentagram. Some would argue it gets into paganism. Some would go so far as to accuse of this as being even Satanist, as being even Satanist. The whole idea that there are satanic symbols built into the streets of Washington, D.C., at the behest of the Masons, is utter nonsense. Freemasonry doesn't practice magic in any sense. Freemasonry was created by men who, who were trying to destroy this concept of magic. The book also depicts conspiracy theorists who see sinister imagery on the Great Seal of the United States. On the backside is a 13-step unfinished pyramid. The front features 13 stars shaped like a hexagram. For some, these are Masonic symbols with satanic meaning. And those 13s, again, I want to repeat this, are not satanic, are not negative, but actually symbolize the 13 states that founded this nation. Founding fathers wanted to give us symbols that told us this nation is going to last, but that pyramid was strength and duration, something that lasted forever. Look at the monument to Washington. It's like Cleopatra's needle. It's this very much a, an Egyptian-looking uh, image that, that appears in the middle of Washington, D.C. The monument is, is an obelisk. Uh, which is an, an ancient symbol, certainly goes back um, to Egyptian times. In basic terms, it's a giant phallic symbol, which also, like I said, relates to the sun, the masculine. The book claims that the Washington Monument has an aluminum capstone engraved with Las Deo, Latin for praise God. That's true, but no one can see it. The very top was this uh, special uh, hunk of aluminum. The aluminum was very valuable when, the, at the time they finished the monument in 1886. I think that in this day and age, and any other day, it would probably be gold. But many of the founding fathers practiced the ancient art of astrology. That's another fact. Benjamin Franklin was an astrologer. Poor Richard's own man. If you get copies of it, you can see his various predictions, whether it's weather or about people and that kind of thing. Thomas Jefferson, in his library, originally had books on astrology. 
the story is right. Our founding fathers saw astrology as a connection between the earthly and the celestial. It is also correct when it states that the laying of the cornerstones for each of the Washington Monument, White House, and the Capitol Building were all timed to occur under the same astrological sign Virgo, even though they were laid in different years. In astrology, it's considered to be an auspicious time to begin new undertakings. People ask why Virgo would have anything to do with Washington, D.C. It's a constellation. Well, actually, it has to do with um, the sacred feminine mythology, war, uh, religion, if you will. It could be described as some pagan that goes way back to Isis of the Egyptians, uh, Persian goddesses of femininity, sexuality, birthing. Ra, the sun, the greatest god of them all, brought into existence first Shu, air, and then Tefnut, moisture, to be brother and sister. In time, they married, great incest, and soon bore two children, a son, Geb, and a daughter, Nut. Geb and Nut grew to love one another, great, a whole family of incest. Geb and Nut grew to love one another and wished to marry, but Shu, their father, opposed it. Anyway, he found them, you know, in a po uh, you know, trying to make love or whatever. And he separated them. Anyway, Geb became the earth, while Nut, with the only tips of her fingers allowed to touch Geb, became the arch of the heavens above her dress, sparkling with the stars. So, her sign is in the stars. So there she has remained forever, driven apart from her brother, lover by the power of air, her father. Finally, Ra, sorrowing because he needed to be banished from the earth every night, commanded that Thoth be the moon, a colder light than his own, but maintaining a little of the old myth of Thoth. In time, Nut would give birth to four children, Osiris, Isis, Set, and Nephites. Anyway, what's interesting about this is I-S-O-N, a huge comet just passed called Comet Ison, and that was... Uh, I don't really want to get distracted, but you might want to check my research out on Comet Ice, and it was supposed to be a really huge comet that lit up this, uh, the entire horizon at the end of 2013. Ice is being dubbed the Hanka Comet, bringing them light from the distant past. Now, one of the most interesting stories here that connect with this, and I'm going to leave you guys with this, is the path and the journey that Ison takes. We've always been told to watch the sky for signs. Now from the time Comet Ison becomes visible to the naked eye, it traverses the constellations of Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpius, Serpents, Hercules, and finally, Draco, before it is no longer visible with the unaided eye. Now, putting this together in terms of how the Hebrew Maserat depicts these aspects of the constellations, it reads like a book. The seed of the woman, Virgo, the lion of the tribe of Judah, Leo, who shall punish the enemy, serpents, will redeem his atoning work through conflict with the enemy who will salt a man's heel, scorpion. His mightiness, Hercules, will reign victorious as he bruises his heel, casting down the dragon, Draco, and trotting him under his foot, and then rededicating the temple, bringing back balance the scales of Libra to the temple of God. As this all fulfills their prophecy, right here, just the path alone. Anyway, Isis later gave birth to Horus. These became the nine gods of Heliopolis. Only you can stop these servants of Set. Who is this Set? A force of great evil. Thousands of years ago, he attempted to enslave the entire world. But the wizards of the world banded together using their powers to drive Set into the abyss. Dimension. His serpent men, disguised as human steel among us, awaiting the return of their master. Mighty set, I heed your call. Let your power flow through 